All right, I want to talk about using data attributes inside of your HTML. Now, when you're writing HTML, there are certain tags that you're allowed to use. There are certain attributes that you're allowed to use. Some attributes are required, some are optional. In my HTML here, I've got an H1 tag and I've got a paragraph tag. I could come inside here and say, hey, I'm going to use the title attribute. Say, this is the title. Simple enough. When I jump over here, I refresh and I mouse over my h1 tag, I see, you see I get the title showing up. Now, part of the specification with HTML5 is that there are new attributes that are called the data hyphen star attributes, or some people call them the data set attributes. These allow you to come up with your own attributes and still be using valid HTML5. So we have data hyphen time. This is my very own property that I've invented. I want to include the timestamp inside of here. Maybe I'm going to be referencing this later on and I needed a place to save that bit of information. So I created a property called data hyphen time and I put a value inside there. Now in my JavaScript, I can reference this through the data set property. My h1. I'm using query selector h1 to get a reference to this HTML element, and then I'm looking at the dataset property, inside of which there'll be something called time. So we reload a page, here it is. This is the dataset property. As you can see, it's a DOM string map. Inside of here, one property called time, and there's the value. This is the timestamp that was inside of here. I can also reference the individual property time by saying dataset.time or using the square bracket syntax where I use a string inside. This is time. Or we can use the standard get attribute that you would use for any other attribute. So the title the title attribute as an example. I can say get attribute data hyphen time. So with dataset, we're removing this first part, the data and the hyphen. So whenever you're using data set, the data part gets dropped off. Then whatever's left over, that becomes the property. If you're using get attribute, we need the whole thing. You treat it like you would any other attribute. So data hyphen time, this whole thing right here, this is the name of the attribute that I want to get. Now, there are a few rules for writing these attributes. They all have to start with data and a hyphen. That's the first part. Following that, you can use any lowercase lower characters, it has to be lowercase, as well as, as you can see here in the comments, hyphens, underscores, periods, or colons. So I have an example here where I included a hyphen, and I've got one here with a colon. Now, the hyphen, there's actually a little bit of useful functionality with it. Underscores, periods, and colons, they're usable but they give you some kind of strange characteristics when you're using them in the JavaScript. Um, what happens when you use a hyphen is the hyphen will get dropped. When you're coming in here, let's say, let's look at those properties. So p.dataset, that's going to give me my object with everything. So there's the DOM string map, and it has two properties inside of it. One is called timestamp with a capital S. Now that is this one right here. The hyphen was removed and this was turned into camel case. The, the S became a capital S. So that's the Monday value. The other one, time colon stamp. Well, it removed the data hyphen part, but this ends up being the name of the property. So like I was saying, underscore period and colon, you can use them, but you end up with some strange looking syntax. Now, colons usually denote the break between the key and the value. So it is legal to use it for data properties, but it gives you a, a kind of a strange way of accessing it. And you can see as I mouse over here, I'm getting the uh, square bracket syntax being shown to me. That's how it would look if I was using the square brackets. So let's write that out, console.log p.dataset. Now for this first one, it would be time stamp with the capital S. 
for the second one, it's going to remain with the lowercase and the colon is going to be left in there. So I'm going to refresh this, Monday, Tuesday. So the first one that had the hyphen, the hyphen's removed, get the capital S. The second one, it's left the way it was written. And for get attribute, it's going to be the same sort of thing as it was before. It's just however, however it was written inside the HTML. So data, data hyphen time hyphen stamp or data hyphen time colon stamp. So that's the way it was written. These are going to be a paragraph elements here. Copy and paste error. There we go. There's the Monday and the Tuesday. The same way that they were written inside of the HTML like this. Now, one other place that you can use them. Oh, there is also, uh, I've only shown getting here. You can also change the value. So you could say p dot set attribute and pass in one of these. So this could be changed to a Thursday. Actually, the string Thursday is what I want to pass in. And for the one up here, using the alternate syntax p dot data set and now for this one I can do timestamp but for this one I do have to use the square bracket syntax so I can say dataset timestamp that will work I refresh those and then we inspect the elements here close this take a look inside here here's the paragraph and you can see Wednesday and Thursday have been set as the values. So set attribute, timestamp, Thursday, that's the second one with the colon inside of it, and then timestamp had a hyphen, so we remove the hyphen, turn it into camel case, and that's the Wednesday being set. And one last place that you can use these properties is in your CSS. So what I'm doing up here in my CSS is this green square or green rectangle with the word hello inside of it, I'm using the pseudo element after. Display block gives me a big chunk here, setting the background to green, give me some padding, and content is this. Well, we can use the CSS attribute method. So in CSS, you can actually extract an attribute. So let's say that we wanted from the H1, because the H1 is what we're dealing with, so it's its attributes we have access to. I can take the title. We can say attribute title. This is the title. There we go. Or our data ones. So data hyphen time. And there it is. So one last place that you can use these data attributes is in your CSS through the attribute method. All right. Any questions, please leave them in the bottom. And as always, thank you for watching.